Yeah, a bit of sci-fi hitting home for a Michigan couple when a satellite, 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 satellite crash landed in their backyard and their reaction, priceless. You never know what's gonna happen. This baby fell out of the sky and landed in our yard. Uh, Nancy and Dan Welke, cool as cucumbers, discovering a satellite, 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 satellite that had crash landed on their property, still blinking and still attached to a parachute. Turns out the satellite belonged to Samsung, which launched it just days ago as part of a PR stunt to do the world's first selfie in space. Samsung reps did visit the farm Sunday to make sure everyone and everything was okay. In a statement from the company, they said, quote, Samsung Europe's space selfie balloon, 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 came back down to Earth during this planned descent of the balloon, 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 to land in the U.S., discovering a satellite, 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 satellite of the balloon, 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 balloon. Couple when a satellite, 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 selfie balloon, 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 balloon. Get on top, Discovering a satellite, 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 satellite. Of the balloon, 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 balloon. Couple when a satellite, 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 satellite. This doesn't get someone to selfie balloon, balloon, balloon. Discovering a satellite, 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 satellite. Of the balloon, 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 balloon. That's Earth. Molten. We're. Yeah. Earth is a giant ball of lava mm -hmm. with a thin crust on the top, which we think of as like the surface. This thin crust. And it's mostly just a big ball of lava. That's Earth. I know that this guy, former astronaut Don Pettit, says that we don't currently have the technology to go to the moon anymore, let alone to Mars, because for some unknown reason, we destroyed that technology. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. The problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But going to Mars should be uh, one of the next series of steps that humans do. The first step should be going back to the moon for a number of technical uh, reasons and exploration reasons and then after that Mars, maybe a uh, high orbit in uh, Venus atmosphere, maybe going to Europa. There's all kinds of uh, targets to go to places of interest in our solar system. The, the only limit to human future is in our own imaginations. Now, now this is a cover. Okay. So it, we call it a shutter, and it protects the windows from micrometeorites. Okay. The shutters are closed, the windows are protected, and also thermally insulates the windows from the radiation environment of space. So it's, it's called real good engineering inside. Oh, okay, wait. On the inside, you're throwing a lever or something. Yeah, you're and turning it, a knob. And it's... And it's Open. Yeah. On the outside. On the outside. How do you do that and maintain a pressure seal between them? O-ring type seals. No, you don't. It's, it's called real good engineering. With a rotating check, all our hatch seals are O-ring type seals. Yeah, but how... Uh, so uh, we, my uh, uh, my it's brain's... Up here. It's, it's called real good engineering. Let, let's go inside, we can see it. Okay. okay. Uh, seven, because we have seven windows. What happens if you get a leak on that? Um, then you have a leak. It's, it's called real good engineering. You just have a leak. And, 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 and what you, you would do you is... You lose air. Yeah, you would probably seal the whole cupola off. And then uh, there's probably a plan, 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 probably a plan. I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably a plan, probably a plan, probably a plan, probably a plan. If God intended man to be a spacefaring species, he would have given us a moon. 
This quote is by Kraft Ericke in 1984, and I like the way he stirs the words around from an earlier quote, something about flying. And I like to use it to set the mood for why the moon. Oh, the moon, it's close. It's only a quarter of a million miles away, but it's close in space vernacular. It's three days away using proven propulsion for human transport. Returning to the moon at one-sixth gravity will allow us to study the physical sciences and the life sciences in a fractional gravity environment. The moon is a destination uh, worthy in its own right. The problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and it's a painful process to build it back again. It's, it's called real good engineering. In just a few months, NASA's space shuttle program will take its last flight, but the ABC Action News IT team uncovered a problem at NASA happening on the ground. Investigator Michael George explains tonight. Eight, seven, six. They can put a man on the moon. One. Booster ignition. But they can't keep track of the equipment they use to do it. That's according to NASA reports obtained by the I-Team. Kennedy Space Center employees report just last year nearly half a million dollars of high-tech items simply vanished. Something's broke in the system. Suzanne Padone works for Inventory Management Solutions. Companies hire her to keep track of their inventory and make sure nothing falls through the cracks. We showed her what we found at NASA. It appears that there isn't really a process working year after year, and it's probably going to continually get worse. None of the lost equipment is reported to contain classified information, but it is expensive. Like this one, a digital video recorder valued at $100,000. Here's another one, 11 radios lost, price $35,000 and a high-tech wave reflectometer went missing in 2008. That's another $18,000. NASA officials say they're aware of the problem. We need to do a better job of keeping track of it, obviously, and we know that, and we want to do a better job of it. Most of the missing items are computers, TVs, and radio equipment. NASA argues they're losing mostly old and unused items. They also say most of it isn't really lost. It's likely still at Kennedy, somewhere could be something that was that it was supposed to be listed in this place, stored on a shelf to be excised. It's not where it's supposed to be. It gets listed as missing. Former NASA employee Keith Cowing says NASA's losing more of its technology because the space shuttle program is ending and the agency's facing cutbacks. But he believes NASA shouldn't worry too much about lost equipment. Don't spend your time tracking computers and not launching spaceships. I mean, there's you need to be launching spaceships. As a kid growing up, I saw John Glenn fly into space, and I wanted to become an astronaut, and here I am. Take three. Now I can die happy. I've flown in space, now I've run one of those. I'm like, done, Pettit. What do you call that? I'm a NASA astronaut. I've flown three times to the International Space Station and spent over a year living there. An example of something designed on Earth that doesn't work in a weightless environment is when you have a beverage with an aroma, like coffee, much of the pleasure comes from smell. And you can't do that when you suck coffee through a straw from a bag. That's why I made this cup, is so you can drink your beverages from an open container, you can smell them. Let's do a toast. But when you are in space, you can't run down to the store to buy parts. You have to be able to improvise with what you have on your mission. And so I looked around and I found a piece of plastic, cut it up with scissors and used tape. You put your coffee or tea in here, the tea and coffee crawl up the side here that has this angle and it parts itself right next to the rim and then you can just put your lips on there and sip it. To made this porcelain version of the Zero G coffee cup. It's an incredible sense of accomplishment when you have made something. It could be simple, it could be complex, but the fact that you made something and it fulfills a unique function, there, there's no better feeling than that. And our atmosphere, on edge, it's 
this thin blue line. And that's all that separates us from the vacuum of space. Suck, suck, suck. Selfie, selfie. <laughs> the moon, it's useful. Besides just places to live, it's useful for its resources. And we call this in situ resource utilization. It's something engineers think up. Tell you right now, if you're listening, NSACA, I'm available, okay? If you show me all the real wreckage, I swear to God, I will make fun of that crap to the end of time. I'll make up stories. I'll, I'll lie to my mother. I don't care. You show me a UFO, I'll lie to my I mother. I swear to God, I will make fun of that crap to the end of time. I'll make up stories. I'll, I'll lie to my mother. I don't care. You show me a UFO, I'll lie to my mother. The work that goes into designing, building, testing, and launching a vehicle of this sort is no small feat. And we are super excited to be a part of the Roadster's billion-year journey through the solar system. What was going through your mind? How, how amazed were you to see your roadster up there with Starman uh, just cruising along with the Blue Planet? And how long will we be getting live views, do you think, from the car? Well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. Um, and you can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have way better CGI if it was fake. You know, the, the, the colors all look, look kind of weird in space. There's no atmospheric occlusion. You don't, you know, like everything was too crisp. Um, and um, but we you know we didn't really test any of those materials for, you know, is it space hardened or whatever. It's it's called so real good engineering. It just has the same seats that like normal car has. It's just literally a normal car in space. And you can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. But basically, what it is, is you don't need to carry everything for a sustained presence on another planet with you from Mother Earth. It's, it's called real good engineering. Particularly things that you need by the thousands, if not tens of thousands of tons. Not pounds, tons. Just experience. 